Hey everybody, welcome to PBI Radio. It's Chris Guns, and my guest today is Carlos Famoso Hernandez, former WBC Super Featherweight Champion. I'm sure he's got a lot to say. He fought a lot of people. Let's get him on the line. Carlos Hernandez, man, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us at PBI Radio. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me here with you. So tell me about yourself. Where were you born, Carlos? Uh, well, you know, I, I like to say I was always born in El Salvador, but honestly, I was born in L.A., born and raised in L.A., but, you know, on and off, I lived in El Salvador. Um, it's my country. It's uh, where my family's from, and uh, I've lived there many years, but uh, but honestly, I, I grew up in L.A. Mm-hmm. And so, so you would go from L.A. to El Salvador? Yes, Love definitely. So what was it like in El Salvador growing up? beautiful man it's uh you, you just feel free it feels like you don't there, there's nothing like to uh to be scared of back in the day it was it was so peaceful but uh with uh the turmoil in in late 78 and uh, during the 80s you know everybody i mean the civil war broke out so uh, we had to definitely stay in la yeah and what was the difference from la to el salvador I'm sure it was a huge difference Tell me what L.A. is like growing up for a kid. No, L.A. is... Uh, East I mean, L.A., right? City, city life, the urban life, and uh, then you have uh, a lot of a lot of gangs. Yeah. And uh, you just have to learn how to fight a lot. And L.A. is a fighting town, man, let me tell you. And it was East L.A., right? Well, I was, uh, I was in South Central L.A., and we went to a, a suburb, which is uh, Bellflower, and which is not far from, like, uh, Paramount, Compton, yeah. Long Beach area. So I was, in, I was in that area. And tell me about your, your home life. Who, who was in your house, the Hernandez household? Uh, it, it, there was always food in the house, thank God. I mean, <laughs> there was rice and beans all the time, and uh, it, was, it was a good upbringing, thank God. I mean, a lot of times uh, my parents were never home because, I mean, they were always working, but thank God. You know, there was always food at home. Yeah. How, how many brothers and sisters you got? Got any? I just two brothers. Yeah. Were they in boxing too? No, actually, no. My brother, one brother's in the seminary, and the other brother, uh, he's uh, he's finishing his uh, university and uh, going on to uh, hopefully live in Australia. Oh, that's beautiful, man. And yeah. And what kind of kid were you? Uh, well, I was a. Uh, I was not a, I was not a troubled kid, but I was always a kid that was like kind of hyperactive and like, like messing around. Like I, I was always, uh, I didn't like to just sit down. I was always uh, those, those kind of kids that wanted to mess around, kind of uh, bother, bother other kids, maybe bully a couple of kids. I just, I just liked to be uh, bothersome. Mm. Being an annoying brat. <laughs> That's what I am. I, I still am sometimes. Yeah, yeah. My wife tells me that. <laughs> so you you were born to be a boxer, maybe. Were, were you an athletic kid in the sports? It's funny that I was, and I my dad would take me to uh, Main Street Gym back in the, when I was like seven years old, eight years old. I would go uh, watch. Like uh, Duran, Little Red Lopez, uh, just uh, Carlos Palomino, just uh, the big names back in the day. I I go to the Olympic Auditorium, which is like the the, the main mm. arena where boxing was so big back in my day, and uh, um, and I just I didn't like it. I I, I didn't like the boxing. I thought it was just boring. I thought it was bloody and nasty, and and uh, I wanted just to eat or mess around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and around with my friends or something, but um, I didn't. I didn't like. I was. I liked. I liked sports, but I wasn't really like athletic. I was just kind of like um, too slow, or or maybe it was like I was just too scared or something. I don't know. Yeah. And and how old were you when you put the gloves on and started doing it, trying it? Well, I was fourteen years old, man, when I first put them on, and I was like, you know, and I di- I didn't know, but. Because I didn't like boxing, I didn't. But but my dad took me to a, a, a place over in Paramount, which is like right next door to Compton, on the like right on the border. And uh, it was 
you know, we went, it was me, my, my dad took me and uh, two other friends of mine that were gangsters. And, uh, you know, they were kind of like tough and they're, they're pretty tough. But then they had, when we got to the gym, they put some gloves on and we sparred that first day. And they said, all right, you guys are going to spar. Let's see what you got. And uh, I, I, I lit them up. And then I said, oh, man, boxing, this is good. I like it. So you started. I got lit them up and I was like, man, this is something I could do. Yeah, wow, man. And you just stayed with it after that. How many fights you have in your amateur career? Amateur, I think I had uh, 20, 29 or or 24, something like that. I forgot. Wow. How many did you win? I didn't I didn't know you had so few. I thought you had a pretty extensive amateur career. <laughs> wow. It was, uh, it was very small. Uh, I, um, I think I won like about 19 and lost six. So when you turned pro, what made you decide to turn pro? Well, it was funny because I stopped boxing amateur, and uh, but I was like about 18 years old when I when I stopped. I I studied. I went to uh, I went to uh, junior college, but I was I was still training. I was still going to the gym because I mean now I loved boxing and I was on the track team for uh, for college in LA, and I was I was in really good shape. But now I'm 21 years old. So like three years passed without me really fighting, and uh, um, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna turn pro, man. I feel like I'm in good shape. I'm smacking some of these guys in the gym, I'm smacking them around and all that. So and then the Olympics were going to happen. And I was like, man, some of these guys that I used to train with before are going to the Olympics, and so, so I said, you know what, I'm just gonna turn pro. Mm -hmm. And um, and I turned pro, but I got a draw in my first fight. Yeah, I know. Okay. That, that's cool, though. I mean, it, it shows. Were you nervous? You think when you when you turned pro? Definitely. That's that the main thing. I was just nervous. I was so nervous. I was like, I was cool. I was cool and everything. But then when I was entering the ring, I had this like ex girlfriend or something. She was like, Carlos, get out of the ring. Let's go home. And I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> she put more fear in me. I was like, "Oh shoot, what am I? What am I doing?" <laughs> so I was, uh, I was, I got really nervous, and uh, I, I think I blew my wad the first two rounds, and then the, the last two, I was just dead. I was just surviving, and uh, it was a draw. Yeah. Well, I won the first two rounds, and I lost the uh, next two rounds, and uh, but it was, it was an even match, and uh, I. I didn't lose, but I didn't win the fight. Yeah, a lot of great fighters even lost their debuts, but did it make you wonder if this was for you? or Because it might dissuade some people, you know? Yeah, no, I, after that, I was like, forget that, man. I'm, I'm putting everything um, on hold because I, 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 was, uh, I was going to, to school and uh, I was on the track team and I was putting more attention to that more than anything. And so I said, you know, I had like... 14 subjects or some 14 classes or something like that some some ridiculous amount of classes and i was like no i better put more if i want to do this i think i could do this if i had more time to dedicate myself to this uh sport and so that's what i did i i, I stopped going to school i said you know what i talked to my parents i said Let, give me give me just one year and see what it takes me and uh because my dad didn't want me to quit school and I said, damn, it's not about just quitting. I just want to put it on hold. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, he said, all right, well, okay, I believe one year. If you don't do anything one year, that's it. Mm -hmm. You uh, go back to school. I was like, all right. So then after that, I just I started training. And just then a few months after that, I had my, uh, my second pro fight, and I won mm -hmm. a fight. You remember who that was against? I don't remember the name, no, I don't. But I remember the, the fight itself, and I remember it was a, uh, it was it was a good win. It was a good win, and um, I think it was by decision. But mm -hmm. it was uh, it was it was it was good. Yeah. And, uh, I had a crowd going, and I had a lot of confidence, and uh, I was really well prepared, and I had a very good corner, and uh, it was it was great. So, who trained you for your first fight? Was it the same one that trained you for your second fight? Too? No, no. My my first pro fight that trained me was Bill Slayton. Mm -hmm. Trained uh, yeah. trained Neiman Brewster and uh, a bunch of other guys. Yeah. Like uh, great. He used, he used to train 
and uh, Ken Norton. Oh uh, yeah, I know. I know Bill Slayton. <laughs> I know about Bill. He's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah Bill Slayton, man. He was he was my man. It's just you know, I I I, uh, I went to another trainer because uh, I went to another gym. I signed with uh, a contract with that with uh, these people that own another gym. So I I went with him, and then they put me with. The best, one of the best uh, trainers I've ever had was uh, with uh, Jackie McCoy. Oh, yeah. I had numerous world champions, yeah. Carlos Palomino, mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, Mando Ramos and uh, uh, Raul Rojas, and just just a few others. And um, he was uh, he was my my guy, my main guy too. Yeah, Jackie McCoy. You got Bill Slayton. You work with Amilcar Brusa. It's amazing, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I worked that guy with the with the very best guys yeah. that that could work. The only guys I didn't work with were like Freddie Roach, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know I, he just I guess got bigger with uh, when I was just finishing up my yeah. career. Yeah, well, make a comeback, and I'm sure Freddie will be in the corner. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in your fifth pro fight, you fought Mike Dallas. That was the first fight at the Great Western Forum. It's like a mecca on the West Coast. Tell me about fighting there. What's it like fighting at the Great Western Forum? Man, that was the, the place, man. I, I mean, it was you know, the Olympic Auditorium, but at mm -hmm. that time, the Olympic Auditorium yeah. was like shut down. They shut it down for a while. Mm -hmm. There were no any fights happening there anymore, so it was the Forum. The Forum was the place that was happening on Monday night fights. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember just... Uh, being well prepared for for Mike Dallas, and he was he was good. Uh, I heard he was good. He was an undefeated guy, and uh, I believe at that time, and uh, and uh, just uh, a pretty pretty tough tough character. From uh, I believe he was from uh, from uh, mid California, somewhere like Bakersfield or Fresno or something like that. And uh, just uh, I just remember training hard for that guy and. Thank God we, we got the job done, and uh, it was a knockout, I believe. Yeah, and it was a knockout. And, and it's amazing how you you would go there to watch Duran and, and all the great fighters, and then you're in the ring to yourself. You know, It's amazing. Yeah, and interesting. And, and believe me, I did not believe that I was going to be a, a fighter, a pro fighter. Yes. I, I didn't think that. I mean, I knew at 14... At 16 years old, I knew this is what I was going to be. But before that, before 15 and under, I, di I didn't know what I was going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. In some kids, you already know they're going to be baseball players. They're going to be firemen. But I didn't know till I was about 16 years old. Yeah, but and I, I knew I was going to be champion of the world. That's incredible, man. And one of your early fights was a disqualification win over Sergio Baez. What happened there in that fight? Well, oh, man, I remember that clearly that fight because... Um, I think I was uh, either the semi main or the. I, I think it was the semi main in that fight. But I remember Shane Mosley even went to that fight and congratulated me after the win. And and I was like, wow, man. Because Shane Mosley was, you know, we used to spar together a lot, you know, coming from LA and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was my, at my, during my time, he was my favorite fighter, my favorite current fighter. I used to remember him from the amateurs. I just wanted to, like, emulate him i wanted to act like him in the in the ring although i didn't fight like him <laughs> his work ethic was was just phenomenal and uh, i w always wanted to, to be like him in in the gym and uh i'd watch him and and uh, i learned a lot from believe me i learned a lot from him and general because general i was like his main uh spawn partner when he was champion yeah and shane was known to be sparring with great fighters when he was like 16 years old in the gym were you doing that too fight sparring with all those great yes, fighters yes yeah definitely i was uh when i was 16 years old and had like maybe two amateur fights i was sparring with guys that were ranked in the top five in the world or or champion of the world i remember sparring with juan uh, Mesa uh, with uh, angels pedrosa at that time when i was sparring angels pedrosa he was like 20 you know with 20 knockouts or something like that, or 19 knockouts. No, I think it was like 18. No, oh, I was born with uh, with Angel Pedrosa, with Juan Kid Mesa. I don't know if you remember who uh, Angel Pedrosa was. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. He was like, he was like 17 and always like 17 knockouts. Yeah. I mean, at the huge. 
they they would write about him on Ring Magazine. He was like, he was from Venezuela, and he was like, uh, kind of like the Edwin Valero of that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just knocking everybody out until he, like, I think he was 20 and 0. And to yeah. knock out, then he got, he got stopped yeah. by a Kronk fighter. Mm. So it was a good back and forth fight. And then after that, I, I stopped spawning with him because then I moved on and all. But, but uh, he uh, he was a great, great fighter. I sparred with um, Hector Camacho back in. Mm. I, I didn't have. Oh, and I was spawning with Roger Mayweather. Wow. <laughs> that was, I sparred him. Uh, for, he used me to, for the Chavez for the Chavez fight uh, back in '89. Hope it was the second Chavez fight. <laughs> Yeah, the second job is fine, yeah. yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. How, what'd you think of his right hand? Did he ever catch you with it? Yeah, <laughs> many times. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I thought, I thought for sure Roger was going to win that fight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because he was looking sharp in the, in the ring, in the gym, and mm. beating everybody up. And, um, but, I mean, Chavez was just a monster. Yeah, he was a monster, man. But after a few more wins after Sergio Baez, you fought Narcisco Valenzuela, a real experienced guy. Fought a lot of guys, and it was the first time you went ten rounds. What was that fight like with Francisco or Narciso Venezuela? It was it was a learning experience. Um, I, I I was trying so hard to knock him out because because De La Hoya knocked him out, and um, he fought a lot of other guys. So I wanted to stop him. Mm -hmm. So I I believe that I tried so hard to to knock him out, but. You know, we got the win, and um, I was I was happy with that. But I was a little frustrated with not knocking him out. But but the, the W is the W, I guess. Yeah. How'd you feel after going ten rounds? Were you tired by the end of it? No, yeah, no, no. I was uh, I was I was still I was still fresh. I just uh, remember though trying thinking why why didn't I let go more? But I was trying to launch those big big shots so mm -hmm. much that that uh, I just didn't throw many, many lighter shots yeah. to yeah. accumulate one of those, you know, it was accumulation shot that I could just probably tear them down, wear them down and, and get them later on in the round, in the fight. But I was just trying so hard from round one to stop them. Yeah. And after fighting to a draw in your first fight, you, you reel off 21 straight wins and then comes 24, four and one Aaron Zarate. Tell me about that fight. Aaron Zarate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, there were a couple of things uh, I did that um, that maybe I could have could have done better, and uh, I could have uh, not lost that fight. But like I had a little bit of a weight issue on that fight, and um, I changed my 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 trainer at that time, and I went with Robert Alcazar, and um, I just felt that. There was no, not that much of uh, attention for me, mm -hmm. and so uh, I remember when I got to Lake Tahoe. That's where the fight was. I I was struggling to, to lose the, the last two pounds, and uh, but I but I did, and um, and then we fought, and there was a split decision, and I, I even thought maybe I pulled it off at the end uh, by by at least one round, and. Uh, they gave it to him, and uh, I was I was disappointed, very disappointed. That um, that night, I remember, you know, model, model metal pies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's like, dude, I was I was feeling so down, and he's like, yo, Carlos, man, this this happens to all of us, man. And uh, so he, he takes me to his room, and uh, we 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 have a few beers, and. Uh, <laughs> And I get drunk together. <laughs> we fought that night too. <laughs> <laughs> so by the end of the night, you were, you were happy again. <laughs> That's cool. We were we were pretty pretty tough and lit up after that. <laughs> but uh, but mm -hmm. I, it was learning experience. Um, after after that, I I wanted to take my my career somewhere else. I I didn't feel like um, I was. Um, I, I just didn't feel that there was uh, the attention that that I needed that that I thought I'd get. And uh, it, it just wasn't there. Yeah. And did you get any, any, was that when Robert Alcazar had De La Hoya? Yes. And did you spar with De La Hoya at all? Yes, I sparred him a couple of times. Yeah. Did you guys get along at all? all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was, uh, he, of course, he's a guy that, when I saw him train, did believe me. 
I mean, I, I think I've been around the game for a while, and uh, I've been around the guys, the best guys in my time. And even Sam Mosley, who, who I used to just like, just watch and try to learn from. But dude, De La Hoya, man, he just had something else, bro. He was just like a, he would just like transform from a night, like a, a quiet, shy boy into a, a, a monster in, in, the, in the gym. He just was like, he was, he had a vision. And you could see that he was in that zone when he was hitting the bag. But I had the privilege to just watch him and just, just when I'm in the bag and he's in his bag and I'm just looking, you know, out of the corner of my eye and just how intense that intensity had. You know, he's one of the guys, one of the, the guys I, I really, really do admire in, in box, what he did in boxing because he probably doesn't get as much respect from a lot of the, like, the Mexican, Mexican diehard fans. But, man, I was there, man. I'm, I'm telling you, that dude was, was something else. Yeah, that's what I hear. I hear everybody says how intense he was when he's training and how good he was and how strong he was. You know, Everyone talks respectfully about Oscar. Never heard a bad word, really, about his work ethic or just treated people nice, I heard. That's what I heard. Well, I, I don't know about that, but I just, <laughs> his, his work ethic was just something else. I mean, even, I mean, I was there when he fought, when he fought uh, Relis. When he fought Relis, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he won maybe two weeks for that fight and not not intense sparring. It was just like, I mean, he would spar always intense and do what he had to do. But I mean, it, it, to me, it was like two weeks and I'm like, oh my God. I, I, I thought, oh my gosh, Relis is going to hurt him. I thought Relis was going to hurt Deloitte because, I mean, Relis is training hard. He's in paper two, training hard, sparring every day and, now Delahoy went over there and destroyed him in two rounds. I know. It was crazy. He did that to Gennaro Hernandez, too. I was shocked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah, I was shocked, too. And, and you you took off 10 months after after your loss to Narcisco Venezuela. What were you doing? Or Aaron's, Aaron Zarate, your, your loss to Aaron Zarate. You took off 10 months. What were you doing during that time? Um, I'm just trying to get my... Uh everything back together and see and uh what, what i was going to do i uh i was picked up by another another group of guys and uh, i thought maybe we'd uh we we could um work together and, and we did we worked um, a, couple, a, a few fights um i think i fought uh Goyle vargas uh, not not long after that and um and uh it was, um, it was it was a good win. It was um, it was actually a really good win because um, because Gordon Vargas was a former champion and he was uh, trying to get right back up there to, to fight for another world title. Yeah. And um, I had a I had to squash his uh, his his plans. Yeah, Goyo Vargas was good. I remember Goyo. Before you fought Goyo, you fought you fought Isagani Pumar. Tell me about that fight with Isagani. Mm. Yeah, it was that was for a, a minor world title. Yeah, the IBC Super Featherweight title. Yeah, yeah, the IBC title, and uh, it was in Beverly Hills, and uh, I worked hard for that fight, and um, I wanted to come back and prove that I was uh, I was not just a, a journeyman and um, or a fluke, and so I really trained hard. The thing was, uh, I didn't have much sparring. Uh, for, for a southpaw. I mean, he was a southpaw. He's a gun and pull more southpaw. Mm -hmm. And very, very crafty, very crafty uh, Filipino fighter. And, um, but I knew he couldn't hurt me. So I just remember just uh, him uh, winning round after round. But I, I felt that I was I was catching up to him. I was just working patiently, hitting him here, hitting, just working the body a lot. And uh, I believe it was uh, the 10th round that, that, that I hurt him with the body. I went on top, and uh, I just really I I sent him to the hospital after that fight. Mm. <laughs> and and how'd you feel holding your your belt after that, your first title, even though it was IBC? It's still yeah, it, pretty. So it, it felt like uh, this is great. Okay, this is just uh, the beginning of uh, of of hopefully what's what's to come in, in the future. So you had your eyes on bigger things, still. That's yes, what, yeah. After that, you fought Goyo Vargas and you beat him. And a few wins after that, you you've got an eighth round KO over Bernard Harris. 
first to beat him, you, you fight the late, great Gennaro Hernandez. He, he's underrated, though, in my opinion, Gennaro Hernandez. I, think, I thought he was a great champion. And yeah. tell me about that fight. What's fighting Chicanito like? Well, see, that, that, uh, it, it was very hard because we were like brothers, man, believe me. Mm. We were like brothers, and uh, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood, basically. And, uh, and I mean, we, just, just, he was very, we, were, we were very tight. And uh, and then when uh, I got with these guys, I was his chief spawn partner. We were always in the same group together. And so then after when I uh, when I left and when I went with Alcazar, and then when I went and then after when I left Alcazar and I went with this other group, um, they started negotiating. And uh, they, I mean, Janal was the champ at that time, and they said, well, "Why don't you fight Janal?" And I'm, oh man, I don't want to fight Janal, and he didn't want to fight me either, but. I mean, he said, if I have to lose anybody, you know, I'd, I'd like to lose to you. And um, and I just took it, well, you know, my, my advisor at that time, they said, well, this is your your opportunity. And um, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll take it. And uh, I mean, there was no money. There was no money in that fight. And, uh, but but I took the, the opportunity. And um, it, that, that's probably one of the, the things I regret most of uh, in my career. Is uh, taking that fight when I, I felt that I wasn't ready, mm-hmm. and uh, just it wasn't it wasn't my my time yet, and uh, the preparation was was not that good either. But I, I did what I could yeah. uh, with you know, the circumstances, and um, you know it was it was a good fight. It was a good good fight. Yeah, so, you returned yeah, to the Olympic Auditorium. Yeah, yeah. How was the fight in there? Another mecca. Yeah, it was uh, it was great. Uh, Wasn't that the Great Western Forum? No, I was like, no that that fight was at the Olympic Auditorium. Oh, okay, I thought that was the Great Western Forum. My bad. <laughs> you returned a few months later. You fought Roberto Avila in, in in El Salvador. That was your first fight in El Salvador. Was that a dream of yours to go there and fight? Uh, absolutely. It was uh, it was like sixteen thousand people. Wow. And went yes with the president and uh, his cabinet it was it was uh, an awesome awesome feeling believe me yeah. to have that it was it was like like it back out would go back to the Philippines it kind of like that you know it was yeah. just, I, I felt it like that just even you know, with the presidential uh, that's awesome uh, you know the, the president oh being there and supporting me and, and the people just in love with 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 me and uh, it's something that I brought to to the country and uh, they never had something like that and uh, it was it was something big and uh, it was it was just Salvadoran pride. Yeah, and you had seven fights after after your loss to Chicanito. You had six by knockout, and then you get a shot at the guy who beat the great the great fighter you just lost to Chick- Chicanito. You fought. Some guy named Floyd Mayweather Jr. <laughs> what, what's that like? You fought 130 pound Floyd Mayweather. He was 25 and 0 at the time. What was it like fighting Floyd? It's crazy. Man, it was it was uh, intense, man. It was intense. That was probably one of the best preparations I've ever had. Mm-hmm. It was just I knew I was fighting um, the, a, a very good fighter. Yeah. Um, I. Um, I, I felt that I was in very, very, very good shape, very well prepared mentally and uh, physically, and um, and I, I think I gave him a really tough fight. I thought. I mean, not mm-hmm. not too many people say it, or when they show it on yeah. HBO or anything, they don't really show that. Yeah, but I thought he had a, a tough. Tough night that night. I mean, I made his nose bleed. I had, mm-hmm. He had a nick on his face. And his mouth was bleeding. I mean, you're the first man that got credit for knocking him down. Only man. Well, I mean, it wasn't like a flush knockdown, but he took the knee. He mm-hmm. took the knee because I mean, I was attacking him, and so he, he said, "I'm taking the knee." Yeah, I remember you went to hit him, and he he said he hurt his hand, and you could see he did grimace. You know he did, but you went to you went to go after him, and it made him put his his like glove on the floor, and the ref called it a knockdown, but. It is an official knockdown. How's that feel to you? Do you, do, do, is it special to you that you're the only one that did that so far? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, um, it, it, it's it's great to hear that and uh, to do that. Uh, it would have been better to, to beat him, obviously, but <laughs> but I mean, I hold my head up high because uh, I know not not 
even the best fighters of today have have not been able to do nothing like Juan Manuel Marquez or sure. or all these other other cats that 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 have fought him the past five ten years. They they haven't been able to, to do what I've done to to my mother. Yeah. Not many. You were deducted a point in round twelve for elbowing. Was it out of frustration that you did that, or was it just an accident? Elbowing, man. That's so stupid, man. It was. I wasn't out. He was the one elbowing me, man. I had a. Yeah. He has a problem with that doing the elbows, but it was so funny that they take a point away from me because they. I wasn't elbowing. Mm -hmm. I was. I was. I was holding him by the throat almost, and um, and, and that, that's that's how I got a point taken away because I was kind of like measuring him, but because he was doing a lot of the elbowing, but. Yeah. You know, it, it is what it is, and uh, it, it was. It was. I thought it was hometown cooking because I mean, I was finding his hometown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you see him now, you see he kind of morphed his style. He got bigger, and he fights in a different style. He got older. What do you see that makes Floyd so great you know, through his career? Well, he just. Uh, it seems like he's just a very dedicated guy. With uh, doesn't 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 really um, play around with when it comes to training. He really takes it serious, and uh, he has he has his art down packed yeah. and um, nobody can break his defense no one no yeah. one has yeah. and uh, that's what makes him so great he's dedicated to it and um, people would think that that he he's just a, a showboat or, or just a clown I mean it's wrong yeah where, do you rank him high in, in the history of boxing like where would you put him in, in no, I, I do I do I think he's one of the best well for sure the best of our time mm -hmm. and uh, of, of all time he, I would say he's, he's up there he's up there yeah Montel Griffin I don't, I don't know if you know him I'm sure you do but he has him at number three all time it's pretty incredible <laughs> That's, that's pretty good I mean uh, I, I would say probably with, within the number within I would say within the, the top seven. I yeah. mean, there, there's just so many uh, great fighters yep. out time. But, but uh, it's even hard to say who's number one. I mean, there's so many. No, no. But, uh, but, of course, there's clearly a couple that, that do stand out. And de definitely, Mayweather's one of them. Now he's getting into promoting and with his man 50. What, what do you think of TMT? I think I think he's doing great. I think that's that's awesome. That's something a fighter should do. Uh, uh, a fighter with that's able to, to to do that financially. That that's great to set up a, a company and, and do it for for him and for the sport. I mean, because if he retires and doesn't have nothing after, look, look at Tyson. I mean, yeah. I mean, Tyson could have maybe done something like that. And um, I I applaud him. That that's awesome. He's going to help other people out other fighters out and helping himself financially so that, that's great yeah and you return yeah. you return about four months later and get a win over and you win the wbc latino super featherweight title over juan manuel juan and hell macias and you score three other wins including a decision over tough justin juco you get another title shot this time against david santos for the vacant ibf super featherweight title you had the president of El Salvador there to cheer you on too. He came to America to cheer you on too, and that had to be exciting. But he wasn't the only one there for you. There was also Roberto Duran and Alexis Arguello. Talk about that night. What was that like to have all those guys there to support you? Dude, not not too many fighters. Not not even Mayweather. Well, kind of, but mm -hmm. it, it felt like you know. Yeah, I mean, not even Mayweather. He, he didn't have Obama going to his fights, yeah. you know. He just said he did. I'm telling you, man, it, it's it's something so freaking special that I'll always have. Yeah. I'll always see with my children. And um, to have the support of, of the president being there, carrying the, the, the support of, of millions of, of Salvadorians um, throughout throughout the world, mm -hmm. uh, it just, it was, it was incredible, an incredible feeling. And what's what's Roberto Duran and Alexis Arguello say to you? They give you. Oh, man, they, you know, I mean, we had our time together in the in the suite, and um, of course, uh, Duran, man, he's he's crazy, crazy. <laughs> and I'm a I'm a really good friend of, of his daughter, and um, and I really like like her a lot. And um, he's just he was my favorite fighter of all time, mm. and I was like. Just, just like a nod. Just, I, I didn't, couldn't say much because yeah. I was just so stunned, yeah. and um, kind of, I didn't really think of even the fight because it was just. I felt like I was at a party, <laughs> and um, there was just so many things going on, 
and I like to concentrate like right before a fight, but it just felt like uh, just like a party yeah. with, with resident there. And then that I have Duran and Alexis Arguello. Duran is a very hyper guy <laughs> and uh, just just uh, tell me, use your jab, use your jab. Yeah, that, that, I think that was his favorite punch, mm -hmm. the jab, and uh, just really, really adamant about throwing the jab. Yeah. And, um, but very quiet was uh, Alexis Arguello. I, I've, I've met our whale before we've had uh, we have uh, actually one of uh, we have uh, uh, a godfather in common and so one of his godfathers was one of my godfathers and, and he, he's dead now he died mm -hmm. and uh, but but we had him in common and uh, we would uh, meet up at uh, in El Salvador for events or something like that now, how'd you feel when you heard about Alexis passing away were you no, nah, it was it was it was tough. I mean, I was in El Salvador when that happened, and uh, I wanted to go to uh, to his uh, to his burial, but they were having a war in Honduras, a civil war. Yeah. So I I couldn't go, and we couldn't fly. It was dangerous. So it, it was tough. It was tough because I was in El Salvador when that when that happened. That was like two years ago, I believe. Yeah, yeah. that's terrible, man. And your next fight was a, a two round war with Moises Pedroza. You were both down in that fight. It was two rounds. What, what do you remember about that? Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was funny that you mentioned that because my brother was just playing it a little bit yesterday. Hmm. And, <laughs> and we're, we're, but it was just a small clip where I, I, I go down. I mean, he punched me. He catches me with like a right hook, I believe. And I, I just, I, my glove touched the, the canvas. And and so uh, he, uh, they counted. They gave me a, they gave me an eight count. And, uh, but then I come back roaring, and um, I, I remember just wanting to destroy him, and remember what what Amika Busa would tell me, you know, with when you're inside, just sit down and throw that that right up because that's exactly what I did, and uh, tore his uh, his lip up, and um, he received, I believe, like 19 stitches or 20 stitches in his mouth. That was crazy, seeing the blood. <laughs> that was a deep, deep cut. Yeah, that yeah, was intense. Lousy place on your lip. <laughs> Yeah. And your next fight after that was against Steve Forbes. Another fight stopped by a headbutt. Tell me about that one. Oh, man, I was, uh, that was another fight where I think I was in one of the, the best shapes I, I could have ever been. And um, my, my wife, you know, I don't know if you know much about my wife, but she's very, very important in my career. And mm. uh, she's also a sports psychologist. And so she helped me a lot in, in my career. Believe me, my wife helped me a lot, and not just mentally, but she also helped me physically on on my my running, on my um, on my training. She would go and just kept like help my punches, and uh, she. I was I remember when I was getting ready for Steve Forbes, I was probably throwing about thirty punches around, and she was like, "Well, what is that?" And uh, you you got to throw more. I mean, you're fighting Steve Forbes, you know, and. Uh, and so uh, we got we we got that punch count to over a hundred punches around, and um, it was a fight where I, I felt like I was just very very well prepared for. It. And uh, Forbes caught me with a beautiful right uppercut. I believe it was in the fourth round, third or fourth round, and uh, stunned me. And I, I thought I had like a solid chin, and. Um, and I, I saw stars, and I was oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. But then, thank God, I came back. I made him miss a lot. Mm -hmm. That was uh, one thing I had was um, was my head movement. And um, even though I was a front type fighter, I was uh, I was always on you. But I, I would move my my head a lot, and um, and that was uh, one of the key things that I had. And uh, that that's why I believe I won that fight because I made him miss a lot, but I threw a lot of punches and. Uh, and connected a lot of punches, and that was the, the key to the victory. Yeah, and you fought you fought a lot of great fighters, man. I, I forgot when when you when you look back and you see them all, you you forget how many great fighters you fought. But then you you fought another one in Eric Morales. He brought his WBC belt, and you brought your belt, and you 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 fought. He's a known warrior. What was fighting Eric Morales like? Yeah, I, I thought, you know, okay, Eric Morales, you know, I've seen all these fights with him, and, and uh, of course, a guy that is a Mexican idol, and, um, you know, I respect that, and I grew up with Mexicans in L.A., so, you know, I respect that, especially in the gyms, mm -hmm. but, um, but what 
we fought, man. He, he fought me different, man. I was I was in expecting it. He uh, he boxed me, and uh, I won more of a war. And he would even um, kind of like make fun of me when I would be missing. He'd be like, "Ole, ole." <laughs> He was like, I was like, come on, man, stay here and fight like a Mexican. Come on. We were, we were talking in, during the fight. And uh, he was just patiently beating me with his jab. And that, that's, how, that's how he won the fight, with his jab. Yeah, I think he was trying to get back to boxing after his fight with Barrera. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, because, I, I mean, after that fight, I think he fought uh, Pacquiao, right, and, uh, and lost. Yeah. Well, was, was it right after that? I, don't, I think it was like a few fights later, though. Was it? Was it? I don't know, but I remember. Uh, I, I thought it was, I gave. I mean, I came out clean in that fight. I, I wasn't. I wasn't touched. It was one of the few fights where I felt like I wasn't really touched hmm. much. And uh, he was cut with. Um, I don't know if it was a headbutt or a punch. I thought it was a punch. And because uh, yeah, I think he had two cuts. And so one was a headbutt, one was a punch. And um, I believe. And uh, I don't know. I thought I landed the. the more telling blows but you know he won with me, me and Eric Morales you know and and he was very technical he beat me on on points yeah what's it like uh the build up for that fight all the people there to see Eric Morales he's got that huge following in Mexico was it anything you've been a part of before or was that the first the biggest fight that you've been a part of yeah, that was yeah, that was. Uh, I well, I think the biggest fight for me was was the one that I had in El Salvador. That oh, this one, yeah. again, this one was probably the biggest one that was against against me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. or one of the biggest ones against me, and um, it was uh, it it was it was great. It was it was good. It was just like when I fought Mayweather too. I mean, everyone was against me when I fought Mayweather, but believe me, believe me when I tell you when when. When the fight ended, when okay, when the fight started, people booed me. When the mm. fight ended, people booed Mayweather and, and mm. applauded me. People stayed. In his Others hometown. stayed and, and asked for my autograph and it was it was great. I mean it was it was a moral victory for me over in, in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And and uh how'd you feel losing your title? Did it did it really hurt you? No, it, 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 it did all, yeah, it, it did, it did bother me and hurt me a bit, but, um, but I know I, I, when I give my best and I try my best, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sad, I'm not, um, I'm not heartbroken because I, I, I did my best and, you know, I'm proud of, of that, yeah, if, if I'm, uh, if I know that I didn't do my best during training or, uh, or during the fight, then of course I, I'd be probably depressed and all that, but. I was uh, I was I was happy that hey, I, I I did my best I tried. Yeah, and a few months later you return against tough Juan Carlos Ramirez. You got a real bad cut. I think it was in in the second round. Yes, it was horrible. Yeah, tell me about Juan Carlos Ramirez. Tough guy. Yeah, tough guy. It was I was uh, I was in El Salvador. I was uh, <laughs> I was on vacation and. Um, I was on a long vacation actually, and it was I had to cut it short. They're like, hey, we're we're offering you a fight on HBO on a Klitschko card. Do you want to come and fight? I was like, well, I don't have a trainer because Busa he uh, he left back to Argentina or to Miami. I don't remember where. And um, and uh, I so we just we separated, and so I didn't need a trainer. So I, I just grabbed uh, I grabbed uh, Rudy Hernandez, Gennaro's brother. And uh, we started working together, but I felt that it was just uh, too short of time for us to really get to know each other. And um, and this guy uh, Juan Carlos Ramirez was just a very crafty Mexican fighter. He didn't really have a lot of pop, just very dirty, very dirty fighter. And uh, I remember when he when he had about being by accident, but mm-hmm. after that he was just trying to purposely rub his his gloves on my on, on my cut and. That was frustrating because then I wanted. Now I was angry. Yeah, you got a split decision. Do you, you think you deserved that that win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I, I should have deserved the unanimous, yeah. but it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was kind of, it was a sloppy fight. So maybe you know the judges thought it was he could have won. I don't know, mm-hmm. but I, I thought I won that fight clearly. But 
Now, at that point in your career, how did you feel? Did you feel the same, or did you start feeling like it was, it was coming to an end soon? How did you feel? Yeah, I felt that you know maybe uh, I needed a little bit more, uh, more attention with uh, with the uh, hand pads. I didn't have that hand mitt work much with uh, with Rudy. It wasn't really it wasn't really there, and um, and he had a lot of other good fighters, but uh, I. Um, I, I thought that, that that's what was missing in the, in the fight. Yeah. You fought Jesus Chavez at the Staples Center. You you fought him on the Goodbye LA card that Julio Cesar Chavez fought against Ivan Robinson. What was it like fighting in front of that crowd? It was a humongous crowd. What was it like fighting in front of the, all those people? Yeah, yeah that, was, that was one of them that, that uh, I have to say, I mean, I thought it was like my people because they're I'm, in, I'm I'm from LA too, but of course you know they're going from Mexico, <laughs> and uh, and so when they started booing me, I'm like, oh what? Oh <laughs> man! But it didn't matter. I mean, it was a good fight. Uh, I th- I thought at least it could have been a draw. They didn't count the the knockdown, the flash knockdown at the last round, and uh, but even if I would have, I think dropped them. I mean, they would count as a knockdown. I think I still would have lost on points. And uh, I was I was very disappointed. There, I was very disappointed. Yeah, it was a great fight, though. You and Jesus Chavez just you come you come forward, both of you. So it, it was a can't miss great fight. Yeah. And, yeah. And like I said, that was on the goodbye L.A. to Julio Cesar Chavez. His son is going for greatness now. You fought on the same card as Junior before. What do you think his chances are against Sergio Martinez? I think they're they're. Just as good as anybody can can be. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a guy who's who has the best trainer right now, and uh, that, but uh, of course the trainer's not going to fight for him. But I think he's really well prepared for this fight, and uh, he's taking it serious. And um, I, I I think the the, the Chavez of old with the new is is going to appear. I mm-hmm. I don't see Martinez. Uh, Handling his his pressure, his constant pressure, and his and his power shots. Uh, the only thing I see him, the only way I see him uh, winning Martinez is if he really uses uh, Bernard Whitaker type tactics. That's the only way. Mm, yeah. Then you fought Manny's brother Bobby Pacquiao. Another close one. Tell me about that fight with Bobby Pacquiao. Man, that that was uh, in Ring Magazine. Yeah, Robert. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, rob- robbery of the year, man. And uh, I don't know. I just felt it, it was handed to him um, on a silver platter, just so uh, I don't know if Pacquiao could sign with top rank or something. I don't know. Yeah. It just—I felt it kind of fishy, and it, it was a uh, it was one of those kind of fights that, like, from a movie where you go to the corner and and people are are booing him, and and but when I raised my hand, they were just. They were just uh, cheering mm. for me. One of those type of fights, and uh, it was it was great. Was it a it was, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. The, the feel of the, the love of the people of of uh, chanting bullshit to the to the to the decision, and um, and even even uh, Freddie saying, you know, he that I clearly won the fight, you know, mm. and then he recanted that at the press conference, but it was. Um, it was it was good. It was a uh, it was a good fight for uh, both of us. I clearly thought I won though, but it is what it is. No, what, what am I going to do? I mean, I'm not I'm not the big name. Yeah, yeah. And then you returned again. You scored a ten round decision over Sean Plessis, but you were down in that one, weren't you? Did you get knocked down? No, I, no, he was down actually. Oh, you put him down and just won a ten round decision. And then I remember you you fought Kevin Kelly. And Kevin knocked you down. I thought you you were knocked down in two straight fights. Yeah, and Kevin Kelly, I I, I went down. That, yeah. I think it was the fourth round as well. I went down that round, and he was probably the the guy that punched me the hardest uh, that I ever felt. Where I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. I, I just remember I, I I thought I was gonna cruise by uh, Kevin Kelly. I didn't really think much of Kevin Kelly. I I do now, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. for the few, I didn't think I'd like. Oh, I should destroy this guy. And that's what I I, should, I thought I was going to do, yeah. and I, I took him lightly, and and uh, look what happened. And so after that fight, I was very depressed. I I thought maybe I should hang him up. If I'm gonna get beat by Kevin Kelly, then you know what? This is not for me. 
Yeah, he's one of the greatest, but he was kind of on the downside. But you never know when a great guy is going to give another great performance, you know? He dropped you in round four. And... Yeah, exactly. And uh, I got cut in that fight, so I just had a lot of a lot of things going against me, and uh, I just couldn't let that go anymore. I couldn't let my shots go. Yeah, so you call it quits. I thought you, you, I thought you said one time how you were dropped in two straight fights. That's why I thought you got dropped by Sean Plessis, but my bad again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I did. Um, I said that, but I said that for my last fight, which was against Escobedo. Yeah. Okay. And and what did you do with your time when you did call it quits after Kevin Kelly? Well, I uh, I moved uh, I moved to uh, San Antonio uh, from LA to San Antonio. My wife and I we really liked him. Well, we, actually, right after when we fought <laughs> Kevin Kelly, we fought here in San Antonio, mm -hmm. and uh, my uh, my wife had a had a friend here, and we stayed with her for a couple of days. And uh, I really liked the neighborhood. Very, it was very nice, very quiet, very uh, very clean, very um, very Orange County looking. <laughs> Without, without, uh, without the beach, I guess, mm. and uh, graffiti and all that. So it was really, I, I liked it. And I, I think that I, I came here. It's a very nice, lovely neighborhood that I have that I'm, that I'm in, and my children go to great, great schools. Thank God, and um, I, I have a good life here. Thank God. And how did you start thinking about a return? What happened? Well, okay. Well, I, I bought my home here, and then so uh, I I start going to Jesse James Lehigh's gym, mm -hmm. and so I'm training over there. Then, then I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna maybe try one more time, see where where it takes me. So I uh, I I leave uh, here, and I train with Danny Smith over in Arkansas, and I train with him to fight. Um, I forgot his name. Uh, what's his name? Jeez. Guy you fought? Uh, some guy I found it, I found him in Chicago, and uh, I won. A, it was a split decision, but or majority decision, but it was a fight where I had my eye closed the whole, practically the whole fight. I um, I dropped him in one of the rounds, but uh, but uh, it was just a tough fight, a fight with one eye. Yeah, that is hard, tough, and and. <laughs> You returned on, on the Telefutura card against yes. Hector Alatori. What do you remember about yes. that? What do you remember about that fight with Hector? Yeah, that, that that's the fight I'm telling that's you. Is uh, I, I think I was even cut. Mm -hmm. I was cut, and, but I had a, just a, a swollen eye, and uh, mm -hmm. and um, it was just uh, I, I don't know. I just I felt like I was rusty. I needed to get let go, but but um, I, I couldn't because I mean, with one eye, it was just just hard and it was just a frustrating night for me yeah and and then you fight the the same Vicente Escobedo that that just got stopped by Adrian Broner he's a skilled guy though tell, tell me about the Escobedo fight what's it like fighting him skilled guy yeah Escobedo he's a, a clean guy clean cut guy he's a nice kid um I just think that that kid at my time I think wouldn't have um wouldn't have survived my type of pressure yeah. but um but it was, um, I felt that, like, in, I, it was in the first round when he when he threw a jab or a right hand. Yeah, I think it was a jab. And I caught his right, you know, because you pick your shot. I, I used to, like, pick those shots. When I picked it, he, he, it was, it was, it just bent my arm back. My elbow, it felt so bad. And I had, I've been having problems with that when, um, for that fight when I would like pick shots, pick shots and um and my arm would go back and it was just like hyper extend my, my elbow and uh, my elbows actually and um uh, and then I got caught and when I got caught I it was like just a flash knockdown and I, I got up and I looked at my wife and said, It's okay, I mean, I'm okay. I just wanted to let her know that I'm okay and even though I got dropped but I just smiled at her and like it's it's okay, I'm 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 gonna keep fighting. And then the second round, boom again. Uh, damn, but I'm all right. I'm all right. I mean, there were flash knockdowns that never before I, 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 I've been feeling like that. And it's like, oh, my God, you know, if I'm getting hit like this, maybe maybe my body told me I shouldn't be in this body anymore. Yeah. And that time you did retire and you stayed retired. Do you ever think about a comeback anymore? Hasn't been that long. I, I always do, man. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been, what, 2009? Yeah, 2009. Not long at all. <laughs>
Yeah, it isn't. I don't know. I think it is. It's been a while, <laughs> and uh, I have a gym now. I have two gyms here in San Antonio, and uh, I, I, I do, I do want to want to come back and fight. But, but it's funny. My wife said, "Nah, you're not coming back." I don't want you to find them more. And, uh, <laughs> so she feeds me a lot. She she gives me a lot of food. So I'm like, I get big. Like right now, I'm like about 160 pounds. But I don't look, I don't think I look that bad or obese. I look like an average <laughs> guy. And uh, but I used to fight at 130 pounds. Yeah. And uh, so I, I feel feel big. And so if I would want to come back, I I, I sometimes tell her, man, I I don't know. I feel like. Maybe I can still do it. She's like, "Well, you can't do it with at 160 pounds." <laughs> so I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." <laughs> you never know. You got you might call out the winner of, of Chavez Martinez. Maybe yeah, right. <laughs> this is gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I I need to start doing something else. And uh, in fact, uh, I want to put on um, a professional card over in El Salvador. Hopefully, uh, hopefully sometime next year. That's great, man. So you're looking to promote too, like yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm actually having my first amateur show um, in November here in uh, San Antonio, but uh, that's just just to start it off, and uh, and after that, you know, we want to do uh, things in, um, in in El Salvador, and hopefully we can go to LA too, where there's a large Salvadoran community there. Yeah, and I love boxing. Yeah, don't count on a comeback though. Look at Vitaly Klitschko fought yesterday. He took off four years almost. What do you what do you think of Vitaly Klitschko and and how do you rank the Klitschko brothers? Man, I, I, I do you know what I rank them very high. I I trained and watched them when they were in L.A. We we trained in the same gym, and man, those guys are just machines. Those guys are phenomenal and uh, great work ethic. Those are guys that I really respect, and um, I think they they're one of the best, uh, at least top ten heavyweights of, of all time. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't give that to him, but I, I agree with you. I think I think they're great, especially I, I think Vitaly's like he really never really lost. Truly, like I don't know, he, people don't give him the respect he deserves. I don't think, but it's just a shame. It's just a shame that they had to be in the era mm. where not many fighters are around like they were in, in the seventies or eighties, even the nineties. You know, it's just yeah, or even the nineties exactly. Yeah. And what do you what do you think about Andre Ward's performance against Chad Dawson last night? Oh man, he's he's Master. to me he's number number two. He's pound for pound for me. Yeah. So you you'd favor him against someone like Golovkin? Yeah, 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 thing? yeah. I mean that that guy. I'm not saying he's overrated, but he's good. But he, he, he's not there yet. Hmm. Yeah. He's not there. Yet. Well, yeah. he, he's good. He's yeah. great. But I, I saw I'm saw him fight and. Uh, I think he's a great, great fighter, but he's not there. Not he's not at Warriors level yet. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, it's gonna it's gonna be a great fight next week with with Chavez Martinez. We talked about that, and and you're going with Chavez, huh? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with Chavez, man. I I uh, I love Argentina, man, and uh, but I love Mexico too. And uh, but it has nothing to do with that. I just think that style makes fights, and I think that st this style that Chavez has is gonna break down Martinez. Mm. If if Martinez of course doesn't doesn't move, he's gonna get he's gonna get hurt. And mm. uh, but Martinez, I mean, he's crafty. He could uh, he's southpaw. He's gonna try to move and run around. But if he stays there with that Argentine pride, mm. I, I think, I think uh, Chavez is gonna take it. Yeah. And and what do you think about Canelo fighting Josecito? Think about that one. You know what? I think uh, well, Canelo is a great up and coming champion that right, to be ranked in the top 10 later down the road but um he's he's a good good fighter i think he's, he's a great fighter um i know i know his handlers how they train and those guys are are very tough very very rugged trainers fighting fighters and um their training methods are very hard um i i think though if josecito uses his intelligence and uh, uses his boxing I think speed will kill power and uh, if he uses his speed he'll he'll win and just with like Martinez but I think Martinez is going to try to prove something he's going to try to that machismo is going to try to get in the way is going to get in the way and that's what's going to be his downfall yeah. yeah could be sounds good to me 
and you got a lot of fans all over the world. How do they show you love? Are you are you tweeting or you got a Facebook account that they could hit you up? Yeah, on? yeah I got a Facebook account and uh, um, I got a tweet, but I got n not too many people tweeting those out there. So <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to get it out there and try to get let people know. <laughs> but hey, Twitter's Twitter's out there, man. Yeah. Well. Good luck with your show you're promoting in November. I'll be in touch with you, and I want to thank you for spending your time with me, man. I thought you were actually in L.A. still. I didn't even know you were in Texas. It's later than I thought for you. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm in Texas now, man. Can you believe that? Jeez. And I used to always say, ah, uh, I used to laugh at Texas. I'd say, oh, man, they're freaking, it's like 120 degrees over there, man. It's like 75 here. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. When I was in L.A. Now, now I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, damn. I love it. But I like I it. it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, uh, man. Miserable summer, though. Miserable. Yeah. It's crazy, crazy. But but I, but I love it, man. I, I, I'm here for the children. Yeah. But. Carlos Famoso Hernandez, I appreciate your time, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. Take it easy. And there you have it. Carlos Hernandez. Humble guy. Great guy. Great guy to talk to, and I wish him a lot of luck. And on behalf of everybody here at PBI Radio, I want to thank him for joining us, and thank you for listening. And follow me on Twitter at Chris2Guns. Thank you.